Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting this evening. Uh, as we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great. Thank, thank you for the replies. Uh, looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, please feel free to let me know at any time. As always, keep in mind that no one trade is guaranteed to profit. I think we all understand that. But, uh, you know, the flip side of that is that each and every trade that we take does have a good potential for profits. Uh, you just want to manage your risk in a way that makes sense for yourself. We'll go over some ideas in that regard uh, as we go through some of the technical analysis strategies today. Uh, and keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Uh, real quick, for those of you who might be new to things, uh, what is technical analysis? Basically, it's looking back at the price movements on, on a chart, and usually it's candlestick charts that we're using. Uh, we're looking back and, and trying to find patterns, uh, movements that maybe lend some predictability to what we think will happen in the future with the price movements. And that's really what technical analysis is about. Uh, there are all kinds of different uh, strategies and concepts that can go into it, literally hundreds and hundreds of indicators that you can use uh, that also look back at the technical analysis and, and try and project some kind of image or signal uh, to, to represent which way uh, the indicator thinks the movement will go. Uh, we tend to lend uh, more uh, wait to the manual methods of technical analysis where you draw your own lines, uh, find your own movements, and, and analyze the candles yourself rather than leaning on indicators in, in my webinars because that forces you to understand what it is the indicators are looking at. Uh, and obviously, you can add indicators at any time uh, as part of your trading strategy, but it makes sense to also understand manually what's going on on the charts uh, so that then when you add an indicator, you, you understand maybe what it's looking at. Uh, not that I'm against using indicators, certainly not. Uh, they can be quite helpful as well, especially for confirming maybe what you already think. Uh, as we go along, please feel free uh, to ask questions, give input in the chat box. I'm happy to share information and to answer questions as, as best as I can keep up as we go along. Uh, I like to start out on our main website and show you uh, where you find our Avatrade Go mobile app. If you don't have it yet, I recommend that you use it uh, unless you're in uh, regions that we don't offer it, but we offer it in most regions. Avatrade Go, uh, what's nice about it is you can trade on your MT4 and MT5 accounts, but you have advanced functionality uh, in placing those trades when you use our app and our web trader platform that allows you to have advanced uh, help with technical analysis, which we'll take a look at some of those features in a minute, uh, and also some help with risk management and, and other things uh, that are very useful. And you see all the functionality uh, risk management features like Ava Protect that are in the app are also in our web trader. So everything that we're about to look at in the web trader, understand, is also within the Ava Go app. Now, to, to download the app, you can go to the major app stores and, and you'll find it. Uh, to get into our web trader, which has the same functionality as the app, you just log in uh, from our main website right here. And that'll take you to a web trader, uh, which has a similar look and feel as to the app. Now, we do have the multi-chart fun functionality uh, in the web trader, which, uh, you know, in an app, you don't have enough room for multiple charts at once. But uh, there's that advanced functionality in, in our web trader as well uh, to look at multiple charts at once. Now. Uh, the reason why I brought these charts up is because there's some similarities between the movements. Uh, yeah, Fatima, in the UK, you, you do have the Avatrade Go app. Uh, absolutely. Uh, good question. Now, what we're looking at here on the chart, since it's a technical analysis webinar, I thought that these were interesting to look at together and we'll at the same time talk about maybe some of the fundamentals behind why the charts have laid out this way. Uh, all three of them, and I, and I drew the lines here for the downtrend. You can see uh, the, the greater downtrend, and these are all on one-week candles, okay? So as we look at one-week candles, we see a large downtrend has occurred. And the downtrend is recognizable because the high points keep getting lower, 
and the low points keep getting lower. So we've got uh, going from a high point to a low point, back to a high point, back to a low point, back to a high point, and then maybe it works back towards a low point. There's no guarantee, but that's the trend uh, for some time now. And we see that also on the US 500, or I'm sorry, on the Aussie uh, dollar, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, a downtrend on uh, the one week candles and also with copper, an overall larger downtrend. But currently all three of these have uptrended in the past four or five weeks. So the Australian dollars gained against the US dollar in the last four or five weeks. Same is true with the US 500 climbing for the last four or five weeks. And the same is true for copper. Okay, now I, fundamentally what has caused this downtrend largely has been uh, the fear that as uh, the, the major economies around the world make moves to try and come out of the high inflation that's been going on, that this will cause an economic downturn, slow the economy. As you try to get rid of high inflation, by raising interest rates, by getting rid of some of the stimulus measures that, that were there to get us through the pandemic. Uh, as you get rid of those inflationary practices and, and start to raise interest rates, rather than having ultra low interest rates, start to get rid of the easy money. Uh, yes, it lowers inflation, but then uh, that, that could cause fear of uh, recession. It could cause a slowdown of the economy and, and potential recession. So uh, that's what a lot of this dropping over the weeks and months has been that we see on all these instruments. Now, why in the past four or five weeks have we seen a jump in the markets then? Why has the Australian dollar went up against the USD? Uh, why? And, and in general, the Australian dollar does well when the economy has positive signs, right? Uh, because uh, Australia exports a lot of commodities. And so a lot of people say as China goes, so goes the Australian dollar. Uh, meaning because Australia exports a lot of commodities to China, if, if it's viewed that China will do well, then the Australian dollar tends to strengthen. And uh, because there, there were signs that the economy had slowed down enough that there might not be enough reason to increase interest rates too strongly in some instances, uh, the economy saw that as positive and we saw a jump in the Australian dollar, we saw a jump in the US 500 and we saw a jump in copper, okay? Uh, copper tends to do well if the economy is doing well because it's used in wiring, it's used in industry, it's something that is in more demand if the economy is seen as doing well uh, and it drops vice versa. So all three of these tend to react the same fundamentally. And fundamentally, they've all dropped overall for the year, but had a, a bounce up technically within a larger downtrend. So, and we can draw those lines here uh, in this in this larger downtrend on all of these charts. Okay, there's the larger downtrend, technically speaking, over the weeks and months on the one-week candles. Same as here, and same over here. Let me get rid of this line and draw it in the proper place. So larger downtrend on all of these, on the one week candles, okay? So then what, what we're wanting to, to say is, uh, what do we think happens in the, in the shorter term? Let me just try and get this line in better positioning. There we are. Okay, so uh, if, if we zoom in on any of these, let's start with the Australian dollar. We'll work, work our way over maybe US 500 and copper. Okay, uh, so Australian dollar, let's go to maybe one hour candles. And we see uh, indeed there was a gap down at the open this week and a drop. So fear seems to be coming back. Uh, at the open of this week, right on cue in that larger downtrend, right? Remember, we're at the, at the high point in a larger downtrend in all three of these. And all of a sudden, we see uh, copper looking red, right, at this larger downslope. We see the US 500 breaking this downslope by a bit. We can obviously uh, modify the line just a bit on our slope. Uh, 
but it's certainly testing this resistance. It hasn't reversed yet. Copper seems to have come up and started to reverse some. Now, uh, let's switch all of these to one hour candles. Okay, and we see copper giving way at a resistance level. We see Australian dollar having broken the support here at the open. The support from Friday got broken at the open and came down and it's bounced back up. So uh, two out of three are either downtrending on the one hour candles now off of that one week, uh, the upper end of the one week channel that was coming down as a larger downtrend. and uh, at the resistance starting to drop. And so on the one hour candles, we see a downtrend on copper. We see a downtrend on the Australian USD. The exception is the US 500. If we switch to, uh, we already did, one hour candles, then we see this is still uptrending. Okay, so we can treat these a little different. If, if you feel, uh, especially after news that you might have saw out of China, Fundamentally speaking, uh, there, there was news overnight out of China, depending on your time zone, uh, maybe last night, that shows China's economy is slowing down drastically. And in fact, China just lowered their interest rate. The opposite of what other nations are doing to try and stave off inflation, China, instead of raising their interest rate to try and handle the, the high inflation, actually lowered their interest rate because their productivity has dropped so much already. It's as if they've recognized they're already into a recession and uh, are lowering interest rate to try and make it easier for business. And so uh, they're kind of the outlier in terms of their monetary policy compared to uh, other areas around the world. So it's interesting to see what they did. Now, uh, if we want to focus on the Australian dollar, US dollar, as I said, uh, we can see that there's a old support level here. This is where we gap down at the open from Friday's close to today's open and then a downtrend. And we see the bounce back up. So if you're looking to make a potential trade, uh, let's say on Australian dollar, US dollar, you, if you're thinking there's bearishness, on the demand maybe for the Australian dollar because of what's happening in China, let's say. If fundamentally you say, wow, China's economy is not doing well with that data that came in yesterday last, slash last night, uh, then you could be looking to say that maybe that'll create w weakness on the Australian dollar. And there's confirmation of that technically with a gap down and a, and a break of the support level from last week. Now, you could see this bounce back up as an opportunistic bounce if indeed you're looking to short the Australian dollar. Okay, From a technical perspective, even ignoring the fundamentals, this gap down shows uh, downward momentum and breaking the support level confirms a downtrend. Okay, So if we're trading even purely technical, you might be thinking sell here. So as we simulate this idea, we can say, okay, Stop loss on a move like this, if you're selling, would maybe be back above this gap. If it re-enters this gap and heads back up towards Friday's close, then you'd say, okay, I'm out. Maybe, you, maybe it wasn't a strong enough downtrend to continue. Okay, just to limit your losses, that might be a spot either at the beginning of this gap or above the top of the gap, depending on how far you want your stop loss to be, right? Uh, how patient you want to be with it because each of these would act as resistance to try and break above today's open or to try and certainly to break above Friday's close would certainly take some momentum, a change in momentum. So stop loss, obviously there's uh, variability in where some of us might choose to put it, but let's say I put it above today's open into this gap. I say if it enters the gap, then I'm out. Okay, so 0, 0.0. 0 0.7085 would get us into that gap, okay, as an example. So 0 
0.85 as a stop loss, puts our stop loss then, and I'll draw a line right about there. It would have to go above today's open and into the gap between uh, today and last week, last week's close. Take profit. If the downtrend does continue, and it's taking a nice bounce for us, if it is going to continue on a downtrend, then we look to say, uh, where's the next resistance or support level? If I go to two-hour candles, I can see, if I want to draw a line, that there's probably some support right in this area here. Okay, this was resistance, 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 and then look at the momentum it took to break past this price. Look at the size of that candle. That's what we call a breakthrough candle when we talk about technical analysis strategy. That is a breakthrough candle. It took momentum to break this resistance, and up it went. So in reverse thinking, it might, it might take quite a bit of momentum to break this support. So if you're looking to scalp a profit, you could be looking to take profit just before that, and that would be at 0 0.7000. Okay, so 0.7 zero even could be something you'd be looking at okay now certainly we might trade something smaller than 25 lots i'm not sure why that was there uh let's put one lot and now we can see possible profit 324 possible loss 526 and you say you know is that a typical strategy to have a larger possible loss than a possible profit and i would say there is no typical strategy necessarily in that regard. You have to let the technical analysis uh, determine where you think your stop loss and take profit should be. Now, with that said, there are some traders that always want, uh, let's say, stop loss to be half the distance of the take profit, that they always want their take profit and potential profit to be larger than what they're risking. And a lot of times I simulate strategies like that, but that's not the only way to trade. You sometimes, based on the setup and the technical analysis, in order to get your stop loss beyond a spot that you think you should on, on the chart and to get your take profit at a spot where you think you should based on the next, in this case, support level, sometimes your take profit needs to be closer than a, a shorter distance than your stop loss. Sometimes that's the case. And so uh, we could set this up as a sell position, Australian USD, current price. Uh, is ticking around up here around 7032 and we've got our stop loss down at 70 flat which is about uh what 32 pips down and our stop loss a little bit further than that on the way up now if you're a longer term trader you say no no i think this economic slowdown could really bring the australian dollar long down longer term okay so we can modify our take profit and we can say, you know what, let's look at a lower take profit, something further down. And now I start to look at one day candles and I can say, you know what, I want my take profit someplace like the one day support level down here. Where I can see that the price had trouble dropping below here. It hit and went up. It hit and went up. Here it hit again and bounced. Hit again and bounced. So that would be all the way down at, say, 68.80. Okay, that's a more patient take profit. It's up to you on those specifics on how you want to outline, outline that. Uh, but if we if we go with the original thought, like we were looking at on the two-hour candles, then we would say 0 0.70. Okay, and so uh, now you have to look at your stop loss and say, how, how much am I willing to risk on this trade? If indeed that's where I need to put my stop loss to feel comfortable, and remember we put it. Uh, up into the gap between Friday's close and today's open. So if that's where you feel you need to put the stop loss to, to be comfortable, then we need to take a look and say, how much am I willing to risk? And let's say I'm willing to risk 250. Now I look and I see my possible loss is 542. So this is where the risk management features come in on our platform. I can say, okay, let me change my trade size then to 0 0.5, and now I can look and say, okay, I'm risking 270 to my stop loss. Still a little higher than I said I wanted, if, if what I wanted was 250, or whatever amount is right for you. So 0 
Now I'm risking 258, 0 0.46. Now I'm risking 249. And it's changing because the, the price is moving right now. So now I take a look and I say, okay, possible profit 143, possible loss 247. If I like the setup, I like the risk management, then I sell. If I don't like the possible profit, I can start to say, well, maybe, maybe I draw a line uh, for take profit at the next support level down, down here at 0.69 or so. Okay, it's not too much further away. I'm not looking at one day candles, but I am looking down here, the price reached not that long ago and twice tested this price level area and bounced up and then bounced up further. So that's up to you. If you wanna extend the take profit to the next area of support that you see on the candles, then we're looking at around 6,900. And so if that's what you wanted to do, we could say 6,920, somewhere just above that support level down there. Now all of a sudden, my possible profit is about double uh, or, or better what I'm risking. So that quickly, you can have the, the risk re reward ratio more in your favor, but then it takes longer to reach the possible profit and, and uh, maybe less likely to reach the possible profit depending on what happens in the bigger picture. But it depends how you view the long-term fundamentals along with the technicals. If you think while well, China's slowing down, I think the Australian will drop longer term, then it makes sense to have that take profit down lower. OK, so at least you going into it, whichever you decide is the right move from a fundamental perspective, then you know how to line up the technical analysis at the proper price levels uh, that you deem significant from the technical analysis. And, and then you've got the risk management outlined for you. And then you can set the trade in motion uh, in a way that makes sense for you. Now we look at the U.S. 500. And maybe we. I uh, go to some different candles here, one day candles. And on the US 500, we see this. Remember, it's at a high point, which we see here, one day candles at a high point on the one day candles. It's been up, up, up. But here's that slope from the one week candle downtrend. Remember, we drew a line on the one week candles. This has been a downtrend for some time. And over this larger time period, each time it got near this slope, it dropped back down again like it did here, okay? Doesn't mean it won't break through and keep climbing, it could. But what we see from a technical perspective is it's reached a resistance level right on Q. Okay, we see resistance on the one day candles down, resistance on the one day candles down, and now here we are approaching that resistance level and it happens to reach the slope, the bigger slope in that down, down trending channel that we drew on the one week candles. Okay, in the bigger picture, this is the top of that downtrend slope. Okay, so very simple if you want to short this based on the technical strategy and also maybe based on fundamentals, you, you only need to take a look and see that you, you need your stop loss to be up only ever so slightly to be above this resistance level that we drew. So if you get above 4,300, you're above the resistance, okay? So if we say stop loss then on the US 500 on a sell, say 4,315, just to get a bit above that resistance level at 4,300 that we drew. If it hits 4,315, then certainly it broke out of that larger downtrend on the one week candles. Take profit, if it does continue with this downtrend and push down, you could shoot for something like 4,000, 4, which wouldn't even have to come close to reaching a new low that it was at just a few weeks back, okay? A new low for the year, not a new all-time low, that's for sure. So uh, if you believe in the bigger picture, recession fears will push this down uh, from a fundamental perspective, then the technicals make sense to put your stop loss above this resistance and think that it could push down even to 4,000 or lower, okay? So now I go take profit, let's put it above 4,000, 4,050, and let's go lot size of 0 0.1. Okay, so 
Possible profit, 2465 risking 185 That's a nice risk reward, and it's set up that way because we're close to a major resistance level. We don't have to risk much to get our stop loss to the other side of, of the resistance. And so uh, in this case, it's an opportunistic entry point if you want to short. And I, I qualify that. If you're wanting to short this, doesn't mean you have to be wanting to do that. But if you feel like this should push down, even though it's uptrending now, uh, and if you maybe trust that resistance, then you could take a shot with very little risk to go after a much larger profit. And again, if you're willing to risk X amount per trade, now you adjust the trade size until you see the amount of risk that you're willing to take. And if that's uh, 250, then you adjust the trade size in, until you see the amount of risk that, that's right for you. Or it might be 100, or it might be 500, whatever you're wanting, wanting to risk per trade within your risk management strategy. You see with this trade size, I'm, I'm darn near 250. And I might be able to go 0 0.15. That takes me a little over 250, but but close enough. Uh, and so I see my possible profit. Uh, very nice. If I'm right, even one out of 10 tries on this type of attempt, I'm an overall profit. Okay. That's uh, the type of strategy that could work in your favor if you've got a handle on the, the, the bigger fundamental picture. Okay. One out of 10 is not hard to be right. If you have this type of setup, uh, and if you're right even 30% of the time with this type of setup, uh, you'd be making a huge, huge profit. Now, if, if we go to copper, again, larger downtrend on the one-week candles, also a downtrend on the one-hour candles, which we're looking at right now. Uh, so again, it's not hard to get your stop loss above a, a resistance level on the one-hour candles and bank that this could push down not only in the short term, but maybe even in the bigger picture, because uh, copper tends to be bearish if there's an economic downturn, all right? And so if we take a look then at a strategy on this, it could be very similar. If you're looking to short copper, sell position, you could look at a stop loss up above one of these resistance levels. There's a resistance here, and you might even give yourself uh, going above Friday's close. You see it gapped down. Again, a sign of a downtrend. It gapped down at today's open. And down it went, breaking this support level here from last week. So here's a support level from last week. Here's today's open. So both of these would act as resistance. Here, this would be resistance from yesterday's or last week's support. And then uh, this would be another resistance level up here, today's open price. And so it's up to you how far would you want your resistance level. If you're just trying to go after short risk, larger reward, you get your stop loss above uh, this old support level here. You don't have to risk much. Okay, so stop loss, let's say 34.64.20, uh, just to get above this line here. 34.64.20 would be... I'm, 3464, 3464, 20, let's say 30, 3464.30 is right there. This line here would have to break to this price to lose, okay, which means it would go back above this little bit of a support. Maybe we cheat that up just a little further to make sure we're past that support. 3464.45, it would really have to break above these wicks to hit our stop loss in that case. So stop loss, 34. 64 let's say 50 even okay we would have to get up above this line to hit our stop loss take profit we don't even have to break today's uh low okay if it even comes down to today's low that's a nice return potentially 3.56 if it comes down back to that price that could be a take profit without even having to break today's low 3.56 even okay so Potential profit better than risk. Now we have to adjust the trade size to be the trade size that makes sense for how much you want to risk. So zero, let's say 0 0.5 lots. Now I'm risking 162. Let me go uh, 0 0.9. I'm risking 292, 0 0.8. I'm getting close to my 250, 0 0.7, 0 0.75. That's pretty close. Possible loss, 247.50. Possible profit, 390. 
again, risk management kind of done for us here. Uh, technical analysis, determining where our stop loss would be up here above this, the broken support. And take profit being determined by technical analysis as well just before today's low. And there we go. Okay, so three simulated sell positions. You don't have to agree uh, with the fundamentals behind this, and you certainly could be looking for technical entry points in the opposite direction, but it's the, the process that's important here for you to understand. Now, I see a question that that, uh, that popped up here. Can you use ABA Protect for two days? Uh, absolutely, you can. Alex, that's a very good question. Let's go to the Australian dollar again. Let me maybe expand this to a single chart. Okay, the question is, if, if, you're, if you're looking to uh, sell on this, let's say, or buy, it doesn't matter. I don't care which direction we're talking about. Can you use ABA Protect for two days to get past an announcement that might be coming up? Okay, if there's an interest rate decision uh, in, in a day or in two days, like there, there's big news tomorrow out of the European Union, out of the UK, and out of the US, okay, and Canada. There's lots of data coming in, you know, CPI data, there's uh, interest rate decisions, there's uh, GDP numbers, there's all kinds of stuff that comes in daily from different areas. So if you look at the fundamental uh, schedule, which you can find here, by the way, economic calendar, trading central, go to the economic calendar and you'll see all the announcements that are coming tomorrow. If you want to get through those announcements, Let's say you wanted to sell on the Australian or buy, but you weren't sure what might happen with those announcements that are coming up. You can do AVA protect, protect by the hour, protect by the day, up to two days and, and go right through announcements maybe that happen tomorrow or the next day, right? So that those, you see the expiry of the protection. So your protection is unlimited or up to your take profit mark if you're programming a take profit and your risk is completely defined by the protection in terms of the protected time period. So if I wanna trade one full lot and go after a take profit that could be uh, at a certain price down that I think it could reach in two days, I could go after profit in the thousands and pay protection in the hundreds. And no matter how far it might go the wrong way, if those big announcements work against me, I, I only lose what I paid for the protection and any small overnight interest during the protected time period. And uh, if it goes the right way, I can make huge profit potential, okay? So AVA Protect is available on currency pairings, gold and silver. Uh, Fatima, I'm not sure what you're asking about the symbols uh, for for these instruments, but you can see uh, the names of each chart, the name of the the, the trading uh, instrument as it's listed in the web trader, as you see it here, and you can you can search for it quite easily. So this is a cool risk management feature that's available uh, if you want to trade with protection, and we've done that in past webinars. If you want to look. At last week's webinars, as an example, we did some trades like that. And you'll see some of these positions. If you look at the history from the last webinar, uh, these these are all uh, from last week. And we see we're, we're up overall on those positions. Some of them were protected. You see this had AVA Protect. This one closed 1,000 in profit. This one had AVA Protect. We only lost the protection, not the 411. Okay, so the profit was bigger than the protection cost by large, and the loss was smaller because uh, we only lost the protection. And we didn't even lose this 411, only lost what the protection cost. So uh, very cool strategy sometimes you can carry out with these features. And if you look at last week's webinars that I did, uh, you'll see we carried out some of those exactly as that question was asked that I was addressing, can you can you do protection through announcements? And absolutely you can. You could do that. Today wasn't a fundamental webinar, so I didn't look at all the announcements, but you could do that with the Euro, 
pairings, with the pound pairings, and with the USD pairings, because there are big announcements for all three of those currencies tomorrow. Uh, okay, so what we can look at before we close things off, I, I, I mentioned that there are technical analysis tools through Trading Central that can help you as well. We just did our own technical analysis manually, but uh, take a look here, Forex featured ideas and analyst views, look at the technical analysis that's done for you. You have all these signals coming in on different, you can do Forex, crypto, stocks, indices, commodities, and there are signals coming in all day long with the technical analysis done for you over here, you see it on the side. It gives you the support levels, the resistance levels, the preferred direction with the take profit prices drawn as green lines in this example, uh, the, the, the stop loss uh, area down here below the blue line, and then the, the alternate direction if the price does break below the blue line to take profit in the opposite direction, perhaps you set up a pending order here. So very cool signals that outline uh, for you potential moves, the direction that's preferred, and also backup moves that you could set up with pending orders. And you see the ones with stars, those are special ones that not only do the 30 minute chart support the direction that's being chosen, but when that you see that star, you see a special note that says the daily and weekly charts also support that direction, which maybe makes that signal even stronger, the ones with the stars. So very cool information coming in that saves you time and may, maybe also you use it to see if it confirms what you already think with your own technical analysis. Martin, good question. Uh, you're asking, is AVA Protect available on US 500 or will it be in the future? The answer is no, it is not available on the indices yet, but in the future, we're hoping it will be. That's something we hope to add in the coming quarter or quarters. Uh, is more availability with ABA Protect on more instruments. But right now it's available on uh, all of the currency pairings pretty much and gold and silver. Very good question. Any other questions before we uh, end things this evening and, and set you free uh, to go look at some of these potential moves that, that look like there may be reversals possible off of greater downtrends that have seen a pullback like we looked at on the Australian, the S&P, copper, et cetera. You also could set up for potential breakthroughs as well. There's nothing wrong with trading on the pullback, potentially, let's say on the S&P 500, that it, that it might drop again in the larger downtrend, but also preparing a buy position above that resistance because obviously it could go the other way as well. Sure, real quick, let's look at the USD Canadian. It's an interesting pairing, by the way, too, because uh, if fear kicks back in, and there, if there's fear about recession, that tends to hurt the Canadian because the Canadian dollar largely is affected by oil prices, and fear of recession tends to lower oil prices. And in general, when there's a lot of fear on the market, the USD tends to strengthen. We see that in the dollar index today. It's The US dollar has been strong this year in general as there's been a lot of fear. So uh, US dollar tends to be a bit of a safe haven currency and the Canadian tends to weaken if there's fear of economic slowdown. And we saw what happened in China now uh, with really poor numbers showing a slowdown. So it's an interesting pairing if, to potentially look and see if there could be uh, further strengthening of the USD against the Canadian. But you also could be looking the opposite direction if, if you feel the fundamentals are different. I'm not here to tell you which direction you should trade. But if we look at USD Canadian, we see a lot of bullish movement. It hit this resistance and pulled back. And if we look at four hour candles, which is what uh, was mentioned in the comment here that I was reading, that it looks like uh, there's been a bit of bearishness. So we see resistance holding here for the time being and the US dollar giving way to the Canadian, okay? You might look for pending order here that if indeed recession fears kick in and become strong again, this resistance could break right here. And a pending order up here to buy if the resistance breaks could make sense at some point. Doesn't mean you can't sell with this downtrend, but uh, really, the, the You've got some some opposing forces fighting here against each other, uh, but 
in general, recession fears tend to be bearish on crude oil and bearish crude oil moves tend to be bearish on the Canadian. And fear overall tends to be bullish on the USD. So uh, this, this area of support here, okay, which was resistance and resistance here, for the time being is holding. And that may be why, because there are some recession fears and that might be uh, keeping the USD just strong enough that for a short term move, by the way, if we look at say 15 minute candles, to put your stop loss from a technical perspective, I, I like the short term move here maybe better. Uh, stop loss here below this little support level that formed and take profit up here before today's highs, before this resistance. So fundamentals say USD could strengthen with fear, Canadian could weaken if oil has trouble because of recession fears. So very little risk to get your stop loss below this little support level and much larger potential profit to take profit before today's high. Okay, so if we do a quick buy and I put take profit at let's say 129, uh, right here where I drew this line, 129.27. Trying to align my technicals with the fundamentals is why I, I'm choosing maybe the shorter candles and maybe a bounce off this little support level as a possibility. Obviously, no guarantee, so we're going to risk manage here. 128, just to get below that support, 128.80. Okay, and then I need to set up my trade size, with the trade size that makes sense. If I go one lot, I'm risking 127. I can do basically double that, two lots, and now I'm risking about the 250 that I made up as my fictitious number that I'm willing to risk per trade. You put the trade size that makes sense for your risk management plan, I'm risking about 250, and my possible profit, 485. So I buy there, and the risk management is, if it breaks this support, I'm out, a quick out in this case and trying to scalp a profit just before the resistance up here, okay? Larger trend today has been up with the US dollar. US dollar's been strong. Now it pulled back and found some support and now going with the, the greater trend of the day uh, with a small risk under that support level. That look okay to you, Alex? I don't know if it's what you were thinking, uh, but that's what the technicals show. Larger uptrend, pullback, finding support in the short term on the technical analysis. And so going in the direction of the larger trend of the day after a opportunistic pullback. Look at it bouncing now. Look at that bounce. Doesn't mean it'll continue, but that's a nice step, nice bounce there. Good question. Zolani, so you're asking, is my stop loss or my take profit 2%? I'm working on a dummy account here. I'm just making up a number of being willing to risk 250. Uh, on my dummy account balance, that would only be a, about a quarter of a percent risk. Okay. If I let, let's say I had a balance of 25,000, then 250 is what one percent risk, right? Uh, you determine the percentage before you start of your balance that you're willing to risk. That's part of your risk management plan. Uh, there's no one right percentage for me to tell you. Uh, you could risk 10% per trade if you wanted to. I feel that's highly risky. You might feel that that's what you want to do, and I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't. But, but the important part is that in the order window, whatever it is you determine that you are wanting to risk per trade, you, you can make sure that the trade size is correct because it's calculating your risk and potential profit for you at once you enter your stop loss and take profit prices. So uh, the bigger question is, uh, what percent do you want to risk per trade? And once you know that, then you use our tools to make sure that that's what you're risking as, as to the best of your ability, uh, you know, barring any gapping past your stop loss, slippage, uh, some things that can happen so that this number is off a little. 
uh, but you do the best you can. And th these tools here make that a heck of a lot easier to do that. Very good question. Uh, if you wanna know what's common, I see commonly people saying they risk 1% or 2% per trade. And that's kind of what you suggested, 2%. Uh, but, but again, that's not a set number. And, and some people do well risking more per trade or less per trade. Uh, you just figure that out for yourself in terms of your risk tolerance, your profit goals, et cetera. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining. I think this is a good place to stop. And, and again, we see larger movement, pullback, and maybe a bounce occurring on, on this particular instrument that we got in at what looks like really good timing, actually. So it was a good suggestion uh, there from, from one of our attendees. All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Till next time, good luck with your trading.